and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Pavani. I hope you're learning good. Let's see what we have got in PIB today. I have a special topic for you guys. It is about University Grants Commission. Now, recently UGC came out with an order or a circular asking all the vice chancellors of universities to celebrate Surgical Strike Day on 29th September 2018. Now, it's not a bad idea, right, to appreciate this valor and courage of our brave soldiers. But why? Why 29th September 2018 should be celebrated as Surgical Strike Day? The first question that I would like to throw here is that, is it the only or is it the biggest mission or the most daring mission that has ever been conducted by our armed forces? Of course, the answer is no. We have tasted bigger glories as well in the past and we are going to taste many bigger glories in the in, in coming future. Uh, when it comes to our armed forces we have huge amount of respect for our armed forces of course we know that they are sacrificing so many things and they are standing up there uh, you know facing all this bad weather and everything and they are protecting us so heads off to this uh, to this brave you can say uh, brave boys and girls of our of our nation but when university grants commission a commission that is supposed to look after the quality of uh, higher education in our country you know they should be encouraging other universities and colleges and you know this whole higher education institutions to perform very well so that we can support our armed forces uh, create R&D that can help our uh, you know uh, this armed forces how we can make their lives better providing better weapons to them you know providing better armor and helmets and other safety gears all these things you know all this safety related thing how we can improve management how we can make it a bit more efficient and effective how we can save money and provide more facilities to our if you are engineering say for example civil engineering a, a university or college then how you can construct uh, those you know buildings or how you can construct uh, those you can say tents and things that can that can protect our so soldiers in from harsh weathers and so these are the circular you know, you know these are the ideas or these are the things that should be coming from the top management that is university grants commission and not this political idea because election is just around the corner so the whole nation this bigger political parties they are on this uh, you know and this political fever is is on them the reason why I'm saying that uh, this is a bit more political decision is because, uh, see, in any state you have, uh, you know, governor is the main chancellor and then under governor you have various different universities and these VCs, vice chancellors of these universities are appointed by governor. So uh, the whole chain, you know, president will appoint governor and governor will appoint VCs. So VCs are predominantly those people who have always been a bit closer. Generally speaking, right, we find that VCs in our government, universities and colleges, they are the ones who are, you know, they have close uh, relationship with ruling party. Uh, having said that, I must also clarify this thing that not everyone, we have seen some outstanding vice chancellors, but uh, if you ask those vice chancellors, you will find that uh, political interference is something that they have faced in their tenure. And what happens is that once we, once this vice chancellor will go away, once uh, his or her term will get over, after that you will have things back to normal. So, university or this UGC wants uh, this parades to be conducted on this 29th September and lectures by our, our ex servicemen and letter writing to pledge support for armed forces and all these activities. Now, why UGC has zeroed in on commemoration of the 2016 surgical strikes with enthusiasm? As we already discussed that we have tasted big, bigger glories in the past. Surgical strike conducted back in 2016 was not the biggest uh, or the most daring mission that was ever conducted by our armed forces on regular basis our armed forces are facing so many challenges and challenges may it be small or big we should appreciate all those challenges that are faced by our armed forces the other thing is that 65 years ago when UGC took birth when it came into existence it was uh, believed that it will come with it will work like a change agent you know it will it will support our higher education system and we will have altogether you know new higher education system we'll be able to build our nation by providing 
best quality education to our students. But what we find nowadays, right, from last one decade, we can find that for higher education, students are leaving our country and they are heading abroad because, uh, you know, when you approach universities or colleges, uh, some of the best in the world are not in our country. They are outside India. It is, a, it is a, we can say, an irony because uh, the first university in the world uh, was... Uh, running here in our country but uh, when it comes to higher education now nowadays we are lagging far far behind so when we compare our higher education institutions with uh, foreign counterpart we realize that we are not only behind them we are far 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 behind them over there you get autonomy you know the vice chancellors or equivalent counterpart of vice chancellor over there they get uh, full autonomy from government of course uh, there are so many universities right big universities are are government or they are government universities but uh, you have full freedom this vc or the main person can take you know decision that uh, he or she believes are beneficial for university and for overall national goal of higher education so this is a thing uh, that we are missing and if we want to you know solve any challenges or problems whatever problems and challenges that we are facing at present in our country if we want to get rid of it if we want to solve them then we have to educate our citizens and we have to you know it's not just about literacy it's not just about writing and reading it is also about training that mind giving that freedom to the minds of youngsters so that they can become self-reliant you know they can they can create things uh, from universities uh, we enough you know we have we have been relying on someone else to help us and someone else to create these dams for us and someone else to do this and that for us it should be our responsibility to create things for ourselves for our country and this is possible when this you know way of out of box thinking and, uh, and you can say freedom this this attitude of freedom in thinking is inculcated in universities but sadly we find that it is uh, this political uh, you can say political heroin or a sort of a, you can say political politics is, is injected you know by this ugc's and they are trying to you know politicize campuses and other things which is unfortunate for our nation now for 23rd september sale is over i beg your pardon uh, but the thing is uh, our pen drive and tablet courses are available to find out more about it check out studyiq.com you can download the PDF of today's lecture from my FB page and Twitter handle. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated uh, this uh, first airport uh, at uh, uh, Pakyong. Pakyong, that is not far from Gangtok. Uh, it is uh, the Sikkim's first airport and uh, this one is India's 100th airport. With this, dear friends, uh, you know that uh, this our northeastern portion you have seven plus one seven sisters plus one state is equal to you have total eight states in which you have sikkim as well now sikkim is uh, an outstanding place uh, this is it's uh, you know first airport so it's going to open so many things you know the whole world uh, for sikkim it will we will see a boost in tourism and business and trade and everything the government of india is trying its level of best to, to you know to increase this connectivity both by air and rail and providing electricity in remotest part of northeastern state and it is building infrastructure and other things so it's much appreciated with this uh, he also said prime minister modi said that this will create this airport opening will create jobs and jobs for youngsters tourism sector jobs will be created here it will bring greater economic activity and grow with growth you know that we can support development too with this he also talked about farmers and he talked about this mission organic value development uh, for which 400 crore has been approved by government of india uh, civil aviation secretary rajiv nayan chobe said that this uh, we have spent uh, 600 crore rupees for this airport and uh, in near future we will find uh, this uh, sikkim will be connected with international airports of paro Kathmandu, and dhaka which are not far from these places are not far from Sikkim, Sikkim, you can see here, sharing its border with Bhutan, sharing its border with China and Nepal here. And uh, dear friends, uh, this is our, uh, as you know, northeastern portion, right, uh, Sikkim. And then you have Arunachal, Meghalaya, uh, Arunachal, Assam, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Manipur, uh, Mizoram and Tripura. Uh, with this, uh, let me show you one of the most beautiful airport I have ever 
seen in my life right uh, this is sikkim's airport can you believe this thing look at the view here it's so amazing and with this dear friends the vice president uh, of our country uh, m bianca naidu was addressing uh, was uh, presented in was he was in basically in hyderabad and he was interacting with uh, the scientists and researchers at national remote sensing center he talked about uh, the role of scientists in in development of our country how scientists you know they develop something they invent something and this invention uh, changes the life of uh, a common man it changes the lives of uh, people of our country and how it can help in better governance as well he also encouraged uh, scientists and researchers to to work more for for common man for farmers of our country he also talked about this uh, state of the art technology and facilities that are provided by isro and how we are harnessing this space technology for rural and urban development he also talked about this uh, isro and he said that isro main, maintains one of the largest fleet of communication and remote sensing satellites with this dear friends he also talked about this optimal use of uh, satellite uh, data for mapping and monitoring the resources and uh, he talked about mg narega he talked about this kisan sincha yojana so many things so many yojanas you know soil health card and so many things are going on in our country and we are able to successfully implement it and you know get proper data and everything because we have satellites uh, up there in the sky so thanks to isro and other scientists uh, who are making positive difference in our lives but this dear friends uh, i have added one you can say another special topic associated with this particular topic of isro as we were talking about isro let me take you through this case uh, espionage isro espionage case of 1994 in 1994 the person that you can see on your screen his name is nambi narayan uh, he was uh, in fact he is a scientist and he used to work in isro and he was working on this cryogenic technology cryogenic technology is associated with very very low temperature so it's very important for our fuel and other things i'm i'm sure you are aware about this cryogenic cryogenic uh, technology that we have you know achieved in recent past now this nambi narayan was arrested and it was uh, you know alleged he was uh, basically arrested uh, Uh, at that point of time police personnel said that he is selling important cryogenic related facilities or this important information uh, to a lady belonging to maldives and this lady is selling items to pakistan and things like that so after you know in 1998 this case was dismissed he was tortured by this police personnel he was abused and so many bad things uh, happened with this person here a person who was as innocent as you and i and uh, uh, he went through all this trauma and everything his career you know the projects uh, on which he was working his image and so many things uh, you know it was destroyed forever and now in 2018 supreme court has of course ordered uh, the government of kerala to give him 50 lakh rupee as compensation now uh, 50 lakh rupee is not a big amount for a person like nambi narayan of course we can imagine right and uh, just imagine cryogenic technology he was working on this thing if we would means, means you never know we could have achieved this cryogenic uh, way before uh, 2016 or 2015 in which we first tried this thing but anyways uh, you have means it's not just nambi narayan we have other cases like dr narayan nerukar he was accused in 1987 in one case in 1987 and after 31 years a trial court dismissed this case Uh, that was filed against him in 1994 another scientist called chandrasekhar uh, 76 year old uh, he slipped into coma recently on friday he was you know he was uh, hospitalized and for last so many years he was waiting for this good news that uh, that he will hear from supreme court but uh, before this news hit this tv screens he was in coma and he passed away forever he died without you know hearing this verdict of supreme court so you can see here this is clear miscarriage of uh, justice uh, it's about individual suffering it is about national laws as well and uh, if we want to change this thing then we have to punish all those police personnel who were responsible for fabricating this whole case and you know creating troubles and torturing all the scientists and uh, for whatever their personal or any other vision Uh, they were doing this sort of thing so even if they have 
finished their duty if they are retired now they should be behind the bars because of this will set out a good example with this dear friends last item that we have is that supreme court today referred this plea challenging the practice of female genital mutilation fgm of minor girls among daudi bohra muslims to five judge constitution bench and now uh, as per united nation convention on rights of the child and the universal declaration of human rights india is a signatory of both this place of both these things and uh, it is our duty to uh, you know to protect our 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 teenagers our girls uh, and uh, this is a practice that is uh, you know that has no you can say medical reasons uh, so it's not that uh, this uh, fgm is going to improve the health of a lady or a girl not at all it's a it's a thing that has been you know going on or a practice that has been going on for a very long period of time now and it is destroying lives of so many girls out there and you can see here in india we have few communities uh, they practice this thing but in yemen and oman and you have this indonesia uh, over there this thing is quite prevalent and in african countries as well it is quite prevalent so it's a very sad thing with this dear friends uh, you, uh, these are your answers here and uh, these are your questions uh, yesterday's answer right uh, australia and japan and flag of iran that's everything so enjoy your studies and i will see you all soon please make sure that you hit the like button and share this lecture with other students god bless you all jai hind